Take Leonardo da Vinci painting The Last Supper, Masaccio painting the frescoes of the Brancacci Chapel, or Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel hundreds of years ago. It would have been completely incomprehensible for them to be handed in a device such as an iPhone and be able to scroll through, zoom in, zoom out, share, upload, download the works they were painting for months, decades, years. Digital technologies have drastically changed the way we interact with the world around us. Smartphones and smart devices have, becoming, have become ubiquitous in society and are, and are embedding themselves in every aspect of our lives. The way we communicate, navigate, interact, work, play, and learn. This project has been about how it is changing the way we approach and learn about art. The Auckland Art Gallery will reopen its main gallery next year after a multi-million dollar development. This studio project is the first part of a larger long-term engagement between AUT and the gallery to develop an interactive learning tool. We've been investigating possible ways to approach the delivery of a multimedia audio tour guide and have developed a working prototype which you can try here tonight. The main objective is to deliver an engaging and meaningful experience of art to visitors. Introduced in the early 1950s, audio tour guides offered an alternative to bulky, costly, and usually unreadable programs, and aimed to tell the visitor that the city cares about his interests and wants to make his stay an interesting one. Digital devices have overcome the limitations of analog and mechanical mediums, and though the device has changed, the goal is the same. Audio tours reveal deeper levels of information about an artwork that may not be otherwise available or understood by the gallery goer. For example, what would you be able to understand just by looking at this painting? Many artworks, especially abstract works, can be hard to read and take meaning from. Digital devices now enable us to break away from traditional audio tour guides, which, where the authoritative narrated voice provides a prescriptive way of moving through the gallery and gives everyone the same experience. It's now about giving the user the choice to create their own experience. The main practical component of this project has consisted of a lot of code intensive development. We have chosen to work with the iPhone platform as the iPhone is a platform as it offers a range of software and hardware features to utilize and it is a well known consumer item that a lot of people will be familiar with. It is however important to take into consideration that the device becomes very quickly outdated, so the content must also be a priority. Regardless what the platform, once the novelty of it has worn off, it needs to be the user interface, the experience, and the content that keeps the user coming back. Many galleries and museums around the world have begun to experiment with digital devices to deliver audio and multimedia content, and in particular, many too have utilized the iPhone platform. For example, the Uffizi in Italy, the Louvre in France, and the Museum of Modern Art in New York all have apps available through the iTunes App Store, which can even be used off-site. To bring this app together, we all learned from scratch the programming language and tools used in developing iPhone apps. And between our group, we could then work on different components to bring the app together as a whole. The key components were creating the base structure of the app, the database from which the content is loaded, the detail view into which the content is loaded, the visual aesthetic, and the navigational map. We've also explored the possibility of integrating our app with Unity 3D. We've created a 3D render of the gallery space, which the user can navigate through, while simultaneously being able to browse through the audio content and visually see connections between related concepts, ideas, and artworks, like a visual mind map hyperlinking in real space. This too, we are running here tonight for you to try out. The practical component of this has also involved recording audio and considering the voice that the user hears and how this too affects the experience. We have tried to make it more like a conversation rather than a lecture. Finally, this is all encompassed by the conceptual framework. Art is a very personal experience. We interact with it not just by what we learn from it, but by, by what we bring to it with our associations. By using an audio guide, the user is able to unlock deeper levels of meaning and art is made more accessible, the messages are better communicated, and the stories are better understood. What we've achieved this semester is only the small part of an ongoing project, but we've explored the opportunities and the potential that it offers.
Aristotle said that the aim of art is to represent not the out outward appearance of things, but the inward significance. The artwork in the New Zealand permanent collection represents our culture and our history. And through an audio tour, we can tell the story of New Zealand in a way that is more engaging, meaningful, and powerful. Thank you.